My name's Anthony Gordon. I'm here to talk to you about the year of mercy. Who can tell me what is the year of mercy? Yes, Emmaus had the hand up there. I saw your hand. You can tell me something about the year of mercy. <laughs> Either can have a go. Big voice. Yeah, big, big focus this year on being merciful to others. Excellent. That's a, that's a very true. Anything else anybody knows about the year of mercy? Who started the year of mercy? Whose idea was it? Pope Francis. Excellent. Here he is here. And we look at Pope Francis. A lot of people talk about Pope Francis as the Pope of mercy and a great man of mercy. Why do you think that is? What's that? Why do people think about Pope Francis as the Pope of mercy and a great man of mercy? What is it about Pope Francis that, that caused people to say that? Yes. Beautifully put there about I think you should come up here and be my guest lecturer. <laughs> he beautifully put about the humility of Pope Francis, and that's what you really described there in all those things. That simplicity and humility and being amongst the people with those um, walks at night that you were talking about. So he's given us that beautiful example of humility, but also the great love that he has for people. This photo here really speaks of that, he, that he loves every person that he encounters. He gives us that model, no matter who that person is. We see his very special concern and love for the poor and the underprivileged, and for those who are suffering or sick. And he gives us those constant reminders about our responsibility to those people. But most of all, he just gives us the example himself in the person that he is. So Pope Francis has called for this year of mercy. And he's called for a special year in which the mercy and love of our Lord Jesus Christ is offered to all people. And whenever he talks about the year of mercy, he talks very personally to people. He's asking you to be the face of the mercy of Jesus Christ. He's always talking to your heart, always, when he talks about the year of mercy. So, there are a number of things that we can think about when we think about the year of mercy. And I want to ask you, have you had any experiences of the year of mercy this year? Are there any special prayers that you've been praying? Have you, have you had an experience in your school community of the year of mercy? Yes. Wow, okay, that's a pretty spectacular way of doing it. So, fantastic. So, so a pilgrimage to Rome and going through the holy door of St. Peter's Basilica, that's magnificent. So, that's a, a beautiful pilgrimage there for the year of mercy. Any other 
ways that people have been experiencing the year of mercy this year? Yes. The logo? Uh, we've also sung um, Blessed Are the Merciful, which is the World Youth Day song. Beautiful. Yeah, great. So you've got the symbols, the banner, and then um, celebrating with the beautiful song of World Youth Day, which is all based on the, the mercy theme, Blessed Are the Merciful. So beautiful. Now, more great ways of celebrating. Yes. Yes, yeah, the Good Friday Walk, where well, isn't that an incredible event where over a thousand, I think, had close to 1,500 young people this year walk um, at night, uh, overnight, um, to, um, was it St. Patrick's Blacktown to St. Patrick's Cathedral Parramatta? Magnificent. On a, and again, another pilgrimage, you know, a, a walk, and another, another great way of living out the Year of Mercy this year. Thank you. So, Really a lot of great examples. Um, you'll relate to this. What's, what's this, uh, this thing up here? What's happening here? Who knows what's happening? You can tell us. You've... So that's the holy door of St. Peter's Basilica. It's a beautiful door. Look at that gold there. And those beautiful sculptures on the door of the life of Christ. And there is Pope Francis opening the year of mercy, opening the holy door. And how often are the holy doors open? Are they open all the time, the holy doors? Only for a holy year. So the last holy year was in 2000. And the one before that was in 1984. So for very special reasons, a Pope will call a holy year and open the holy door. And that door will close again at the end of that holy year, which will happen in November this year. And this is Father Peter Williams opening the holy door, the Porta Sancta of St. Patrick's Cathedral in Parramatta. And that was the Sunday after the door had been opened in Rome, to sow the unity between the church in Rome and the church here in Parramatta. So we're getting an idea of some beautiful parts of the, the year of mercy. And there are the four doors of mercy or holy doors across the diocese of Parramatta. Um, we just saw the one there at St. Patrick's Cathedral. If you live near Kellyville, there's the Franciscan Shrine of the Holy Innocents. Our Lady of Chester Hover in Marion, right next to St. Andrew's Marion, the beautiful arched Polish church, and the Mount Schoenstatt Shrine at Mulgoa. And there's an image of that beautiful chapel there uh, and the, the holy door there. A beautiful thing that Pope Francis offers to us in a holy year is what we call the plenary indulgence, which is a beautiful thing where Pope Francis says, all the, the punishment owing to a lifetime of sin is wiped away in an action whereby you go through the holy door with the intentions of, of the Pope and you pray in our Father, the Apostles' Creed and receive the Sacrament of Reconciliation and Holy Communion around the same time. A beautiful way of celebrating the holy year, the, the year of mercy. So they're just some things we can talk about. Now, something amazing happened on Saturday. Pope Francis spoke to you on Saturday. He had a huge gathering of teenagers in St. Peter's. So in St. Peter's Square and in the Basilica. And he had a beautiful mass for teenagers. In that mass, he gave a homily, which is his message to you. And that's what you have in front of you. His message for the teens of the world. We're just going to have a look at what Pope Francis said to us. Had just open to paragraph one. He says, Dear young friends, 
What an enormous responsibility the Lord gives us today. He tells us that the world will recognise the disciples of Jesus by the way they love one another. Love, in other words, is the Christian's identity card, the only valid document identifying us as Christians. If this card expires and is not constantly renewed, we stop being witnesses of the master. So I ask you, do you wish to say yes to Jesus' invitation to be his disciples? Do you wish to be his faithful friends? The true friends of Jesus stand out essentially by the genuine love that shines forth in their way of life. Do you want to experience his love? Let us learn from him, for his words are a school of life, a school where we learn to love. So my question to you is what is it about about love why is love the only valid document which identifies the christian just have a little buzz with the person next to you what is it about love that identifies a christian Thanks everyone. I might just take a few responses. Who'd like to, who'd like to tell us about, about love? Yes. So beautifully put. So, thank you. Mm. And I, I loved what you said. Love is Jesus. God is love. That's how you started. And of course, everything flows from that. It's very, very beautiful. Thank you. Any other reflection on, on love? Yes. Love one another as I have loved you. That's our, that's our duty as Christians, to, to love in that way. Very beautiful. <laughs> so we have there some really beautiful contributions there. Um, and Pope Francis is telling us, Pope Francis is challenging us to have that same love of Jesus to be the love of Jesus in our world today, that selfless love. The greatest example of that selfless love being Jesus pouring out himself for us on the cross. And you've all got that image somewhere on your, on your college crest, that symbol of love, the cross. I just want to turn your attention to paragraph five. And this is what Pope Francis says to us, some interesting things about our society. At this point in life, you feel also a great longing for freedom. Many people will say to you that freedom means doing whatever you want. But here you have to be able to say no. Freedom is not the ability simply to do what I want. This makes us self-centred and aloof, and it prevents us from being open and sincere friends. Instead, freedom is the gift of being able to choose the good. The free person is the one who chooses what is good, what is pleasing to God, even if it requires effort. Only by courageous and firm decisions do we realise our greatest dreams, 
the dreams which it is worth spending our entire lives to pursue. Don't be content with mediocrity, with simply going with the flow, with being comfortable and laid back. Don't believe those who would distract you from the real treasure, which you are, by telling you that life is beautiful only if you have many possessions. Be skeptical about people who want to make you believe that you are only important if you act tough like the heroes in films or if you wear the latest fashions. Your happiness has no price. It cannot be bought. It is not an app that you can download on your phones, nor will the latest update bring you freedom and grandeur in love. What aspects of society do you think Pope Francis is talking about when he talks about that mediocrity? What do you think? Yes. Materialism. Yeah. How do we see that played out? What do we see? Yes. Phones and clothing. Always having to keep up with the latest gadget, the latest fashion. What Pope Francis is saying, don't put store into material things because you're never going to be able to have enough. You're always going to be wanting more. If your life is about the acquisition of wealth and material goods, you can never have enough. You'll never be satisfied. But he's giving us a beautiful message here that if you're a person of self-giving love, then you will be satisfied. Your heart will be satisfied. And that that's the path to happiness. So it's a really beautiful, positive message that Pope Francis has for us. And finally, he ends on a very positive note. If we turn to paragraph seven, he says, I know that you are capable of acts of great friendship and goodness. With these, you are called to build the future together with others and for others, but never against anyone. You would do amazing things if you prepare well, starting now by living your youth and all its gifts to the fullest and without fear of hard work. Be like sporting champions who attain high goals by quiet daily effort and practice. Let your daily program be the works of mercy. Enthusiastically practice them so as to be champions in life. In this way, you'll be recognised as disciples of Jesus and your joy will be complete. Now, what I want to say to you just finally, I want to ask a question, which is, Pope Francis is challenging us. So what will your legacy be in this year of mercy? What will your legacy be? It might be something personal to yourself in getting closer to Jesus in this year of mercy, spending more time with him in prayer. One really practical thing would be going back into your school community, talking to your REC, your teacher, your principal, talking to the students around you, what could we do as a student body in year 12 to leave a lasting legacy in this year of mercy? Is there a social justice cause in our community? Is there a nursing home we should be visiting, for example? Or is there a prayer experience that we should make available to students in our school, right? So just have a quick buzz with the person next to you. What kind of thing could I be doing? A bit early. Thanks, everyone. We might just draw this to a, to a close. So make sure you have that conversation, getting back to school. What might your legacy be in this year of mercy? Um, 
This is something that is yours to keep, in the words of Pope Francis to you in this year of mercy. Can I say to you, you've got a big year ahead. I'll be praying for all of you, for your success this year, especially around the HSC. And thanks for listening this afternoon. <laughs>